This year's Asia Clean Energy Forum will, as usual, consist of a few deep dive workshops in which a number of experts will consider in depth some of the major issues. And this year is no exception. One of the subjects that's going to be held on Friday the 19th this time will be the subject Collaborative Initiatives on Energy System Transition. The opening remarks will be given by the Chief of Energy Sector Group at the ADB, Yongping Jai, and will have a keynote address by Mr. Takashi Omote, who is with the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry in Japan. Now, this particular panel will consist of a number of themes, many of them concerning energy transition, with also some inclusion of hydrogen issues, carbon capture and other things, all within the context of promoting broader collaboration across sectors and countries. Now, one of the panel members is Shannon Cowlin, who is an energy sector specialist at the Asian Development Bank, and she's with me now. Shannon, thanks a lot for being with me. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. So this idea of transition is something that you've been working with a lot because you've been helping the Indonesian government to try and use geothermal energy as part of its transition process to a sustainable future. Tell us a little bit about the latest things you've been working on. Yes, uh, indeed, I have been working with the government of Indonesia on energy transition issues uh, for the last four years or so, both on geothermal and carbon capture and storage. The geothermal project was just approved by the ADB's board to expand geothermal electricity generating capacity at two sites in Java, which is really dominated by coal generation at the moment. So this is a really exciting project uh, that we've been working on for the last several years, and we're really glad to see it approved. So give me a little bit more background on the theme of energy transition uh, and how it plays into the ADB's general thinking these days. Well, the priorities for ADB are really sustainable energy, uh, equitable access and affordability. And so we're really working with countries on how they can maximize the resources that they have. Uh, Indonesia uniquely uh, has the world's largest geothermal potential. And so it's really exciting to be working with them on that particular sector. But also they have the right geology for carbon capture and storage. So we're trying to work with our countries, our developing member countries on identifying identifying ways that they can maximize the resources that they have for maximizing all of those themes, affordability, equity, and sustainability. And as I said, these themes are being considered within the context of collaboration and cooperation. Um, that's always a really difficult thing to achieve. Uh, there are so many variables, so many uh, cultural and business and, and economic conflicts that might arise in that. How are you finding that as a, as a, a problem issue or as a challenge or even an opportunity? Well, it seems actually to work quite well, as long as you have the right kind of engagement to make sure you're not duplicating efforts, but instead are kind of leveraging each other's strengths. And so, you know, some of our, our, our donor countries, like the UK is really active uh, in carbon capture and storage. Uh, New Zealand uh, is really active in the geothermal space. And so they're engaging on education and policy and, and providing trust fund uh, contributions. And ADB can bring the technical resources and help help the design the projects that, that will actually be implemented and see this through, as well as support with the development of regulatory frameworks uh, that, that can, can support expansion of these rather than just a one-off project, but, but really a catalytic, catalytic impact is what we're hoping for. And the interesting thing is a, a lot of the issues that come up around this collaboration also involve ordinary people, right? Uh, engaging with the communities on the ground and being able to collaborate uh, with local institutions and parties. Yeah, indeed. I mean, one of the really exciting things for me with the geothermal project is, you know, the these projects that are in remote locations, they, they result in these really uh, intertwined interactions between the communities themselves and the companies who are developing the projects or the government entities who are. And that's a unique opportunity to make sure that there are benefits for the local community. So with the geothermal project, um, there's a specific component to improve livelihoods uh, for farmers that are struggling as a result of climate change. And part of that will be to see if they can use the waste heat from the plant to produce higher value agricultural products. And so that's a really, I think, interesting component of the project that really confers benefits on the ground. 
Definitely. So I'm sure that the conversations that you've been having recently, even your recently concluded geothermal deal, will have begun to take into account the issues that COVID has brought up. Do you think this year's ASEF uh, will be held in a slightly different environment? Do you think uh, the whole rethink that, ASEF, uh, that COVID seems to be prompting in so many spheres is going to impact this particular conference? Yeah, I think it's going to. I, I think one thing that's exciting about the virtual format is that maybe we'll get greater participation. People who wouldn't necessarily have been able to travel to Manila, but will join us virtually. And that, I think, is wonderful. Um, you know, I think the downside is maybe we'll miss some of the hallway chats, but but hopefully those, those trade-offs will be realized. And I know that a lot of um, the, the discussions are going to focus on, well, what does COVID mean for the energy sector transition? And how can we sort of use what's happening in this space to catalyze a, a, a greener, more rapid transition, one that really takes into account the urgent action that's needed to combat c- climate change? I know it's early days yet. I mean, we're still grappling with the full weight of the whole thing. But is it possible to maybe begin to see a broader theme that's coming? There's this catalytic process that you're talking about. Uh, do Do you see that shaping up in any particular form in your area? Well, I mean, one thing that we found really interesting is that, you know, we were really finalizing this project right after all of these quarantine uh, measures were put in place and and the extreme oil price drops that resulted from that. And and so what we've seen is in looking at some of the the drilling components, the drilling equipment, there are going to be price decreases in that, but also building a geothermal power plant is then going to provide jobs for some of those people who are now unemployed because they were furloughed because of the, the downturn in oil prices. And so we think that there's an opportunity if we can really look at a green stimulus that focuses on technologies like geothermal and carbon capture and storage, that we could um, employ a lot of that expertise from the oil and gas sector in this clean energy space. And I think that's a really exciting opportunity, but it's going to take deliberate policy action. All right. And and ASEF, as we said, the first virtual event that's happening as a consequence, obviously, of COVID. uh, And hopefully it will yield a greater participation. But do you think that it might also be able to yield greater action after the event is over? Because, as you know, so many of these conferences that we go to, uh, we have great conversations and then go back to our day jobs and find that actually business continues as usual. How are you hoping that this time might actually yield greater activity? Yeah, and I think we're all a little bit hungry. I mean, I don't know about you, but being sort of in this isolated space, um, focusing either on what's immediately in front of me or the distance learning of my kids, I think I'm really hungry to know what other people are thinking about and really, really excited to know sort of where that thinking is taking us and what sort of space that opens up. And I think maybe because we're missing some of those other interactions, we'll be looking more intently for those opportunities. Um, And I personally, hope to to capture some of those and then to bring them back to what I'm doing once the conference is over. I'm looking forward to listening in on the on your session, Shannon. 10.30 a.m. Friday the 19th, uh, Shannon Cowlin talking about clean energy transitions with multiple other people. Shannon, thanks very much indeed and have a good conference. Thanks very much, Tamar.